Good evening and welcome to Talk in the Neighborhoods. I'm Joe Heisler, your host, coming to you from the BNN Live Studios, Eggleston Square, Jamaica Plain, where tonight on the Boston Neighborhood Network, we'll bring you a two-part show, uh, some state politics, as is our usual want in this election year, and, uh, curiously, some international politics. First up tonight, uh, of course, the state treasurer's race isn't the top race on this year's ballot. Most of the attention has gone to the governor's race. But with incumbent treasurer Steve Grossman running for governor, that has opened up his seat and it's drawn a big field. Tonight, you'll meet one of those candidates. He is a uh, activist and a uh, popular state senator from Andover, and we're talking about uh, uh, Mr. Feingold, and he will be here, and we'll be talking to him about why he got into the race for treasurer. He's one of three Democrats in this race. Then on the second half of the show, we'll shift gears. Joining us, an old friend, a uh, uh, successful businessman, world traveler, most recently returned from Ukraine, where he bore witness to, uh, of course, the revolution over there, and since then, the civil war, perhaps a cold war, perhaps a hot war. Kevin McRae joins us. All that and more tonight on Talk to the Neighborhood. All right, we're back with Talk to the Neighborhoods. I'm Joe Heisler, your host tonight, a two-part show. And in this first half, we continue our coverage of election 2014. It's, uh, the countdown is on. We're uh, less than 30 days, or a little more than 30 days, and I should say, until the uh, September primary election. Several very spirited races on the ballot, including the race for state treasurer. As I said earlier, it's not the top race, but uh, with Steve Grossman moving on and running for governor, it's opened his seat up. And three uh, very uh, interesting Democrats uh, jumping into the race. And, of course, there'll be a re Republican in the fall as well. But uh, very pleased to have joining me now from the... Uh, from North Andover, a very popular state senator, uh, state senator is among his colleagues as well, who's uh, uh, running very hard for this race. We're talking about Barry Feingold from uh, Andover. Nice to have Joe, you here, Joe, thanks Barry. for having me on. Thanks so much. Great to be here. Uh, before we talk about the treasure yeah. race, I, I, I've got to ask you about uh, you know something a little more current and, yeah. and closer to home yeah. for you, and this is uh, not owing to... Uh, uh, your run for statewide yeah. office, but of course we're talking about the market basket yeah. uh, Broglio and yeah. of course uh, what it's meant uh, the corporate yeah. headquarters in your uh, Your district there if you kind of uh, does that put you in a, uh, a Difficult spot or no, I mean, Joe, uh, It doesn't Joe because it, it it is the most amazing thing I think I've seen in years where you have Workers that are not asking for more wages. They're not asking for better benefits they're just standing up for a CEO that represents what they've come to, you know, love all these years and what they built, and that is a, a corporate culture of, hey, we're going to take care of the customers, we're going we're to be a family, and as a result, we're going to provide low-cost groceries for everyone. So I've been talking to people that have been there for 20, 30, 40 years, people that have only had one job in their life, which was, you know, they start off when they were 14 as a bagger, yeah. and they've been there for 20, 30 years, and really what they're fighting for it's just to keep things as is. And, and there's not a lot of middle class jobs left. And that's what these people are fighting for. And, and what, what people don't realize about a guy like RDT is when one time their pension funds that with their profit sharing plan took a big hit uh, during the stock market crash in right. 2008, RDT insisted that he refunds and replenishes that, that account so the workers didn't lose any money. And that's and where that loyalty sharing. comes yeah, from. Yeah, and it's amazing. And it just it's just nothing like I've ever seen and I'm just really hopeful, and my fingers crossed, that there's going to be a you know solution to this thing soon. Well, and of course, uh, uh, Governor Patrick has even offered yeah. to try yeah. and mediate, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure you've uh, yeah. uh, you started a, uh, a petition to yeah. try and uh, uh, get them to you know work together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have uh, any hope? I do, I do, because this is you know not only are the workers basically saying that they want it a certain way. The customers have spoken too. Sales are down 90%. And it's not because the stores aren't filled. I mean, there, there's plenty of food in those stores now. But it's about the customer saying, you know what, you should respect these workers. They've worked their whole lives to provide low cost grocery for all our families. Mm -hmm. And we feel that we should stand up for their families. So it's like, Joe, I, I've just never seen anything like this. And it just, 
every so while you say to yourself, you know what, I look at this thing, this is what's right, right about our state, right about our country, and that's why I think we all should stand with these workers. Okay, now translate that yeah. to uh, the treasurer's race, yeah. uh, what it means. Hey, you know, it's, uh, See, think uh, about a lot of people Joe. don't really understand. Yeah, so I, I think what people don't realize about me is that, and I think you can appreciate this, is you know, my family started off in the Georgetown Housing Projects in Hyde Park. I was fortunate, I was given opportunity. Um, both my parents are public school teachers. You know, they taught me very early on in life that there's no magic in life, only hard work. So I truly grew up a middle class kid. I had a paper route with the Boston Globe when I was 10 years old, you know, making sure all the papers were always delivered on time. And when I wanted to go to college, I unloaded trucks at three in the morning to help pay for my college education. And when I wanted to go to law school, I worked two jobs, one which is in banking, to help pay for my own law school education. So I, I'm a middle class kid through and through. I was given opportunities. And when I see people who are really paycheck to paycheck, standing out for what they believe in, that's why I felt like I had to get off the sidelines and stand with these people. Because to me, it's similar to what I grew up with. And that's why I, I want to do what I want to do. Inspiring, to say yeah. the least. Yeah. Yeah. And now, and God, let's go to, because uh, yeah. I, I want to give you a chance to talk yeah. about uh, uh, the race. Now, what, yeah. what, so, Given your background, yeah. given your experience, yeah. and you're a sitting state senator, yeah. well, what made you decide to uh, run for treasurer? Other than, you know, is it just ambition? Yeah. Is it about something else? What, well, what, what? I, I want to use it. It's, first of all, it's an incredible position that you can do so much good for so many people. And as I tell people, those who serve in public life, we don't do it for the fame, money, the glory. We do it because we want to help people. We want to make you know life better for, for people. And this position, you can do so much good. And I want to use this, this position to invest in Massachusetts. I want to use our pension funds to create more middle class jobs. I want to use our school building authority to create 21st century classrooms so our kids can get a great education. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the elementary schools I went to, the North Street School in Tewksbury, is in the same condition it was back in the 70s. And if we're serious about giving kids a 21st century education, we can't have schools that are from the 60s and the 70s. So I want to make sure that we have the most efficient and effective school building program out there. I also want to use this, this office to invest back in our local communities. The lottery sends back a ton of money to our local communities, and there's going to be some big challenges with casino gaming coming on. So there is so much this office does. With my background in the private sector and the public sector, I feel like I'm ready to go from day one, and I just want to make sure that you know, we're investing in our commonwealth and we're doing some great things. Private sector, what's yeah. your private sector experience? Help us to well, understand I, why, well, why this is a multi-billion yeah. dollar uh, corporation. You're yeah. the essentially yeah. the comptroller of the yeah. Yeah. Of, of the currency. Well, I'm the only candidate in this race that actually has banking experience. I'm the only one that actually ever worked in a bank. I think it's very important because, you know, what this is basically a, a banking function. It is. I'm also the only candidate in this race that actually started their own business. Uh, I started a law firm and title company back in 1999. 15 years later, now we have 25 plus people. So even now, on a monthly basis, I know what it's like to make a payroll. I know what it's like to pay unemployment insurance. I know what it's like to pay health insurance. And I'm the only candidate in this race that actually ever started a business. And besides that, my wife is also a small business owner. She owns a women's clothing store. So I know what it's like to make a payroll. <laughs> I know what it's like to manage finances. And I think that's what really makes me you know, different from the rest of the candidates. But at the same time, Joe, I have all this experience in the public sector too. Only candidate in this race that was both a selectman and a state rep and a state senator. I, I noticed like as a selectman, one of the toughest jobs, as you know, being out there, you know, I, I worked on public construction jobs, negotiated with unions, I dealt with municipal finance. As a state representative, I served on the Ways and Means Committee and also the Taxation Committee. Probably one of the most important things that you do is you go to the credit rating agencies and present the state finances. And with my experience on those two committees, I have that experience. Is that the biggest difference between you and your opponents? There's uh, two uh, you know, uh, uh, well-qualified candidates yeah, yeah. as well, uh, and one Deb, Deb Goldberg yeah. and Tom Conroy. Yeah. Uh, is that to help us to understand the differences? Between yeah, I mean, like I said, one of them has served on the state level. One of them has served on the local level. I've done both. They, they both talk about you know private sector experience, but I'm the only one who actually ever started a business. I'm the only one who ever put my own skin in the game and started a business. And I think that speaks a long way. I'm the only one who's actually ever worked in a bank. And I think one of the most important things that you do as treasurer is you make sure the money comes in and you make sure the money goes out. And with, with my experience, you know, I, I feel I have experience to get, you know, get the job done. You know, uh, 
I ran into a, a friend of mine uh, recently, and I, I told him I was going to be interviewing yeah. you, and I yeah. said, uh, what would you ask him? And, yeah. and he said, and it was a really very good yeah. question, how do you make sure you, you essentially yeah. uh, uh, disperse, you know, millions, yeah. billions, yeah. billions of dollars, yeah. that you, you really get value yeah. for the taxpayer dollars that are spent? Yeah. What, what's your answer to that? Well, I think, well, first of all, the, one of the most important things is to have good people around you making sure that you have smart people around you that can you know, obviously look for the best you know, opportunities out there. But I think the thing is with my experience in banking, I think you know, always looking to make sure that we, we refinance our debts, also making sure that we're getting the best possible deals. And as someone who's a business guy, I know I can negotiate a good deal for the Commonwealth. I can make sure we get good deposit rates on our, on our, on our deposits. I can make sure that we get good returns on our investments. And someone says to me, you know, they're a hedge fund, they want to get two and 20, you know, get a two percent fee and twenty mm percent -hmm. of, of of the ex profit, then I know I know what I can negotiate for, and I know what I experienced to you know work with these people. So I just feel it's my experience uh, and the fact that I'm f very familiar with this office that I think I can you know do the job from day one. It's a big undertaking to yeah. run statewide. Oh, it is, uh, Joe. <laughs> um, how are you? How are you faring? How are you being received? Are you? Uh, uh, this is uh, going to be. It's almost here. It's gonna yeah. be, it's very no, close. Yeah, yeah, what will be the difference in the race? I, I think I think the fact that all the support that we have uh, in Boston alone, you know, Senator Mike Rush, uh, Senator Linda Dorsina Fori, uh, former Senator Jack Hart, uh, so many people that are, are supporting me, Senator Sal Di Domenico, uh, Representative Russell Holmes. Mm -hmm. I can go on and on of all the support that we have uh, in the city, and I, I just think that we have you know over 65 legislators supporting us. Uh, we feel very strong about our chances, and we just have a, a great message and a great network of, of supporters. Well, uh, there was a recent piece, and I can't remember, it might have been yeah. Commonwealth Magazine, that suggested that uh, all of the candidates are looking for a uh, Tim for Treasurer moment. Tim for Treasurer, moment. yeah, yeah. Uh, will there be, uh, what will ultimately kind of spread the field? What will ultimately decide the race? I mean, what's stay, Joe, stay tuned. We have something up our sleeve. Oh, so. well, there we go. So we don't want to give that away <laughs> quite yet, you know? So, but no, it is true. It is the thing that's challenging. People say, you know, you run against these two opponents. And I say, yeah, no, they're, they're very good, you know, opponents to run against. But you're also running against Steve Grossman, Martha Coakley, Warren Tolman, mm -hmm. Mar Hill to get people's attention. You know, you're also running like, what's for dinner tonight? Who's taking Johnny <laughs> to soccer? And these are the challenges, getting through to people is very difficult in getting their attention. I've always said about this race, it's like being in the Olympics where you do all this work, but for only for two weeks are people gonna pay attention to you, well, and that's where you get your- That's you, just you, it, there was that, that, that moment. Yeah, uh, of that course, moment. Uh, we're, for those that yeah. aren't familiar, of course, yeah. uh, we're talking about a, a commercial yeah. that uh, yeah. former and, treasurer And that's ran. the key thing, you have to find a way to connect. But I really think with my background, my experience, I really think I, I will connect, and you know we're going to be going up on broadcast TV very soon. You got the money. You all got we did, we raised over 1.1 million dollars, and I, we're going to raise a lot more in the next couple of days. So yeah, in a couple of weeks, I should say. So um, we're going to be very, very competitive, and we feel very good about where we're at. Okay, let's talk about uh, some some issues that hit close to home, especially yeah. here in Boston. Yeah. Of course, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, agencies that yeah. the state treasurer and receiver general, yeah. I should say. Uh, 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 controls is the uh, Alcohol Beverage Control yeah, Commission. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of talk here recently that uh, you know the state has uh, too tight a control over it, and it's, yeah. it's choking off uh, yeah. new restaurants, yeah. more economic revitalization yeah. in neighborhoods. Yeah. What are you going to do about that? Well, I'm going to work with you know Mayor Walsh and the, and, the, and the Boston City Council to try to you know move the process along as quickly as possible. We, you know, we just made some changes to the Economic Development Bill that's going to give you know, Boston more leeway in, in deciding who gets uh, liquor license and they're going to have more ability to grant liquor licenses. So I just want to be a partner with them and make sure that, you know, this process doesn't take forever because in my own district, we had a restaurant that wanted to open up. They applied for um, an outdoor liquor license. They already had one for indoors and it took them four and a half months and they lost the whole summer. And that's just not good for business. That's not good for, for revenue. That's not good for the employees. So I just want to make sure that we have an ABCC that works for the people um, and not, you know, doesn't... Still you know, need it, though, in your mind? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, there is... You know, it's the, the thought is, and, no, and, 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 you know, maybe yeah. it's, it's wrong, but yeah. that somehow uh, 
uh, you know, control over the issuance of liquor licenses was yeah. taken back in the yeah. days of well, the when the Brahmins ran uh, I, uh, Beacon <laughs> Hill, and that uh, you know uh, yeah, was to yeah. uh, because they didn't want the Irish uh, yeah. giving well, up. That, those that's part of the reason why we just changed how you know liquor license is going to be granted. So right. now it's basically like most communities, the, the city of Boston okay's it goes for the ABCC, and ultimately the job of ABC to make sure that you're an honorable you know, good character, mm -hmm. and you're not going to be someone that's going to cause harm. Right. So I, I think that's a good function. The key is can we have quicker turnaround, and I know there are a lot of good people over mm -hmm. there, and I know they want that as well, and I, and I know there's going to be um, more upgrades and more technology, so I think we'll be able to improve the system. Right, casino gambling. Yep. Uh, the lottery has been such a cash cow yep. for the uh, yep. Commonwealth and for cities and towns, as you mentioned earlier. Yep. Uh, uh, how does this change the equation and uh, what role does the treasurer? Joe, it's going to be big. If, if the repeal fails, then you know, right now the lottery basically grosses about $5 billion a year. California, which is what, seven times bigger than we are, only grosses $6 billion a year, their lottery. So this is a very successful lottery. I mean, it is one of the most successful lotteries in the country. We net about a billion dollars a year, which most of it goes back to local aid. Best case scenario with casino gaming coming on, we might make four to six hundred million dollars. Only 25% of that is dedicated to local communities. So for lack of a better word and a terrible pun, to me, gaming is just a bad bet for the Commonwealth. And that's why I've been against it. And I am also very concerned about the social ills that come with it. But ultimately, if the voters don't support a repeal, uh, as, a, as a treasurer who has an appointment on the Gaming Commission, you know, I'll go along with it. Well, uh, of course, uh, a lot of interest because, yeah. of course, there's two uh, proposals, both yeah. on the border of, uh, yeah. of uh, Boston, and yeah. it's, it's, it's had an effect. All right, pensions. Yeah. Now, there's a uh, no-win uh, yeah. situation. Uh, uh, damned if yeah. you do, damned yeah. if you don't. Uh, uh, how do you navigate that? The whole unfunded pension yeah. liability. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, well, workers Joe, as a I, huge state workforce, yeah, and they're depending yeah, on Yeah, well, that. Joe, I got to tell you, I actually really like Thanksgiving Day dinner, and both my parents retired school teachers, and if they don't get their pension checks, I'm probably not getting invited <laughs> to Thanksgiving Day dinner. So so this is something that's near and dear to my heart. But there are some steps we, we've, we've made to improve the pension system. We've made some changes that I think are, are more adequate and fair. And we have a system that we're, the legislature is going to put an extra 10% each year uh, and then after that, for the next three years, and after that, another 7%. So by 2036, we should be fully funded. Right now, we're only 60% 60, 60 funded, compared to most states are about 74% funded. So we do have some big issues coming up, but I think the legislature has a good plan. If we follow it, if we get a good return of about 8% on our investments, then we should be in good shape in the future. Well, and I've got to ask you about this. Yeah. Of course, uh, all eyes peeled yeah. on uh, the recent... Uh, trial of uh, the of Jack uh, John yeah. O'Brien the yeah. probation yeah. trial and uh, there was a globe in the poll uh, excuse yeah. me a poll yeah. in the globe about how people felt about it yeah. and uh, uh, was it uh, as they thought yeah um, and is there a uh, has that as a sitting state lawmaker yeah. has that uh, had an effect on your campaign you well, I, I think had to kind of explain to people no that's not yeah uh, I, as, I, as I as I tell people you know every so often there are incidents like this and you know I was not at the jury so I don't know all the details of the case but most of the lawmakers I work with the vast majority of the lawmakers I work with are honest people that go to work and work their you know what's off every single day to do good things for the people, and one of the, one of the analogies that they've always kind of got lost in this. Yeah, whole one thing. of the analogies that I've I've heard about being in public life is is like being in the airline industry. You only hear about the ones that crash. They never report on, on, the, on all the planes that land safely every day, and that's what some of the colleagues I have in the legislature are people that really work hard, want to do the right thing, and do good work for the people they represent. Well, again, uh, Barry Feingold is a sitting state senator mm -hmm. running for state treasurer, one of three Democrats on the primary ballot here tonight on Talk to the Neighborhoods. Uh, we have just a few minutes left with him. Uh, what's the thing that's uh, most surprised you? This is the first time you've yeah. run statewide, yeah. right? Yeah. What's the thing that most uh, has surprised you in the course of this campaign? Because I know you've been working well, very hard. Yeah, I uh, think the thing that it actually surprised me is that I have a Senate district that includes Andover, Lawrence, Tewksbury, and Drake. Mm -hmm. 
Tewksbury is a very blue collar town. A lot of you know plumbers, electricians. Drake it has farms. Uh, Andover has houses that are multi million dollar houses, and Lawrence has you know high amount of poverty, and, you know high immigrant mm -hmm. and minority group. And what's really what's frankly surprised me is that this is what is Massachusetts, and I think my experience of having a state senate district, anywhere I go, it, there has been unfamiliar um, issues or problems, and I think that's what makes me different in this race. When you have a state senate district that is so diverse, that truly represents Massachusetts, you know, when I'm in Dorchester, when I'm in Mattapan, when I'm in Southie, when I'm in Eastie, when I'm in, you know, West Roxbury, all this stuff is familiar to me because, you know, my district rep is like that. And I think that's a huge advantage that I have. So it's like my biggest surprise is I've not been surprised because, believe it or not, this Commonwealth is very similar. And it's not that much different, whether you're in the western part of the state or the southern part of the state or even, you know, in the Cape. And it's uh, we're all very similar. Have you been back to Georgetown lately? Oh, yeah. That's where I kicked off the campaign, <laughs> and me, me, myself and Mike Rush. So that was a, a very special place. And once again, it was about my family got opportunity. And I'm just looking to give that same type of opportunity back, especially to our young people in the Commonwealth. You get elected, uh, well, whenever it is, in, yep. in yep. Uh, January. And yep. of course, you, you would have to win the primary. Yep. And then you would have to win the general right, election right. against the Republican. First thing you're going to do, besides... Come on your show, Joe. Huh? How's that, wow, wow, wow. All right, how's that? How's that? But no, I think that one of the first things I want to do is make sure that, you know, we have a plan to invest in Massachusetts to create jobs and, you know, really try to help middle-class families and get back on their feet. Well, uh, I want to wish you the best okay. of luck, and I want to thank you for coming by. Tonight. Absolutely, Joe. Thank us. you so much Again, for having Barry me. Again, Barry Feingold, uh, state senator running for state treasurer. Three Democrats on the ballot. Be sure and vote on... Uh, primary election day, which is very early this year, uh, it seems like it's early. It is. To, it's coming quick. Twenty-eight days. Or Twenty-eight so. days, yeah. less than a, a month. Uh, yeah. I want to wish you the Joe, best thanks luck. Thanks so much for having thanks me. Thanks so on. much for coming sure. and joining us. When we return with talking to the neighbors, well, we'll shift gears in a, in a big way. How about some international politics? Joining us, an old friend, a uh, raconteur, a, a creative storyteller who's traveled the world, including most recently. Ukraine, where he bore witness to, well, a revolution, and uh, now perhaps a civil war. Our old friend Kevin McRae joins us.